Martin, it's a great pleasure to welcome you at the Collaborative Research Center uh, Origin and Function of Meta Organisms here in Kiel. Thank you for your hospitality. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you're a medical doctor. You are the former chairman of the Department of Medicine at New York uh, University. Um, you did a fantastic career on infectious diseases. In 2014, you published a uh, influential, a very influential book now translated in 17 or more languages, The Missing Microbes. So infectious diseases means there are some bad microbes. The missing microbes means that we need more microbes. Uh, how to bring that together? Isn't that a discrepancy um, between infectious diseases and missing microbes? Mm -hmm. it, it seems like it is, but I, I don't think so. I, for me, my whole career, I've been interested in how microbes interact with humans to understand how microbes are causing damage to humans and how humans defend against the microbes. And the more I study this, and when I studied certain important organisms, I realized that the, for some organisms, the story is black and white. Tuberculosis, HIV, very, very bad organisms. But then there are other organisms that are, have been associated with the human body for a very long time, And I began to understand that these might be both black and white, that they might have both sides. And that brought me into the whole picture of, of those white microbes, the ones that are beneficial. So missing microbes uh, means we have lost something. Um, is there a possibility that we can get them back? That, that is really the question. Uh, Most of missing microbes is about how we have lost things steadily and progressively. And even if we stopped overusing antibiotics, if miraculously we could stop it tomorrow, I think we would still be here. The question is, how do we get back up? And so that, that's going to be the job of scientists, of medical scientists, to understand which are the ones we really need, which are the ones that we have to restore, the keystone species, and when do we have to restore it? Do we have to restore them in the first few weeks or months of life? Is it, po is it possible to restore them when somebody is 10 or when somebody is 30, or is that too late? So there's a lot of science that will have to be done to understand which are, which are the right microbes to get back, what's the right timing, are your microbes that you're missing the same ones as that I'm missing? So that it will be a whole new field of medicine. Mm -hmm. So today, obviously, or, or the, the last few days, you, the book, your book came out in Germany and has a German title, The Antibiotica Overkill, which somehow reflects to some part of your book, which says the missing microbes, they are missing because we use uh, too much antibiotica. Um, is there still a role of antibiotica in these days? Yeah, a antibiotics are are wonderful drugs. In, 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 in my book, I talk about how I, I almost died from a terrible infection I acquired in India, a form of typhoid fever, uh, and antibiotics certainly made my life a lot better. Uh, so there are many uses of antibiotics, but the, the problem is that we doctors and farmers and fish farmers and everyone are using antibiotics more and more and more, uh, way out of proportion to how much they should be used. And it's all based on the idea that antibiotics don't have any cost. There's no biological cost, they're harmless. That there'll be a few little problems for a few days and then everything will go back to normal. And now it's becoming more and more clear that that is not the case. That every course of antibiotics has some cost. So now we have to weigh The, the benefit against the cost. For a life-threatening infection, the benefit is huge. But most of the time, antibiotics are used for very minor infections, including infections uh, of viruses that antibiotics shouldn't even work against. Coming, elaborating at that a little bit, um, we are living in a, um, my family lives in an agricultural area here around the city. And we learned that farmers are using antibiotics, but not to kill any pathogens, but they use antibiotics 
to get the cattle grow faster or the chickens or the pigs and so on. Uh, can you explain us what is how, how does antibiotics works work in this type of agriculture or even aquaculture that it makes animals growing faster? Yes. Well, uh, I, I wish I knew the answer. I don't know the exact answer, but what I can tell you is that about 70 years ago, agricultural scientists found that if they put low doses of antibiotics into the food or water of farm animals, pigs, cows, chickens, uh, sheep, uh, the animals would grow faster. It's what's called growth promotion. And farmers all over the world now are doing that. They've been doing it for the last 70 years. And the reason they do it is because it works. It increases the growth of those animals 5%, 10%, 15%. So it's very profitable. But I, and, and what the farmers found is that the earlier in life they started the antibiotics, the closer to birth, the bigger the effect. And as I was thinking about that almost 15 years ago, I began to think, maybe that's what's happening to our children. Maybe that's why our children are getting, are getting fatter is because of all the exposure to antibiotics early in life. And that, that's what started me in that new direction. Can you bring that into a microbial context? Well, the microbial context is something that you're very familiar with, and that is that just about every animal that we know of, and every plant, has its own microbiome. It has the, the microbes that live with it, that live in it or on it, Uh, in many cases, these microbes have been living together with their host for millions of years, sometimes even longer than that. And the, the basic idea uh, is that these microbes are beneficial to the host. They, they provide many functions for the host. They help digest food. They, they protect against invading organisms. They train the immune response. They make vitamins. So. We have a microbiome. It's been with us for a long time. It's beneficial. And my hypothesis, which is what I talk about in Antibiotica Overkill, uh, is that we've, this has been changing in recent years as a result of the big use of antibiotics and cesarean sections and antibacterial soaps and antibacterials in foods and many other factors that have had an unknown impact on our microbiome. And I've postulated that if we, if, if we impact our ancient organisms, there will be consequences. And more and more we're finding out that there are. Coming back to the antibiotica crisis um, and the role of a healthy microbiome, although we do not know what is a healthy microbiome, uh, Some people claim that part of the beneficial microbes could become the antibiotics of the 21st century. Would you agree or could you explain us um, how that could work or why that could work? Well, antibiotics by definition are, are chemicals that are produced by living organisms. And the first antibiotics that were discovered were made by bacteria and made by fungi uh, that that producing compounds that would, would kill bacteria, like penicillin, for example. So now when we look at the microbes that in the human body, we're finding out that they're making many antibiotics also. So it could be that the future antibiotics will be us harnessing the antibiotics that we're already making. I think there are many other future drugs that will come out of the microbiome because the, the microbes are interacting with our metabolism. They're interacting with our immunity. They're sending signals to our cells and maybe we can capture those signals, understand what they are and use them for our purposes. Hmm. Which uh, brings one logically to uh, the old observation of pro or prebiotics and Metchnikoff's taking yogurt as a healthy, healthy f uh, food. Um, in your experience, uh, world traveler, uh, you see a future uh, of a new generation of pre- and probiotics, and 
how would they differ <coughs> from what we use today as these conventional probiotics? Well, uh, I'd say the first thing to tell you is that uh, I ate yogurt as recently as this morning. Uh, and, and I've been eating yogurt for the last 50 years, just about every day. So I, I eat it in some kind of faith that it's beneficial. But I don't really know. And in fact, in the United States, and I'm pretty sure it's true in Germany, there are hundreds of products that are sold every day as probiotics. They're sold in pharmacies, in supermarkets, in health food stores. They're very variable. They're generally safe. They're almost completely untested. So I don't know what their value is because they haven't really been tested the way we would test a drug. I'm pretty sure that in the future we will have very well-defined and tested probiotics that will help us deal with intestinal problems, metabolic problems, immunologic problems, may, maybe even psychological problems. That, that's entirely possible. So extending on that, um, if you think in five years and in 10 year term, this host microbe interaction field is at the moment blooming and in a newly emerging field, interdisciplinary field many people get interested in. Where do you think this field will be in five years or then maybe in 10 years? Uh, I, I see this as a scientific frontier. It, it's, a, it's a very broad frontier. And, and if we think about it, that's not surprising because the relationship between microbes, especially bacteria, and plants and animals is so ancient. It touches every aspect of life. Remember, most of, in most of the history of Earth, It was bacteria first, and then animals and plants. We, we came later. We had to adapt to a world that was full of microbes. And adapt we did. That's, that's the success of life. So it's very broad. It will affect everything from health to energy to the environment to agriculture. Uh, and, and it is developing. There, there are discoveries almost every day. Uh, and, I think it will move along a very broad front. When will the products be ready for the clinic? Uh, when will they be ready for agriculture? Uh, I can't exactly tell. But I think the correct time horizon is probably the first one should start appearing in five to 10 years, and there'll be more and more over the next 10 or 20 years after that. Uh, your book has a very nice citation at the very beginning, Stephen Jay Gould's citation, uh, bacteria were, every, were always there and they will be always there. How did it come that I mean, humans and researchers really mostly ignored them beside of hardcore microbiology, but all the impact of the microbiome, what as we call it now, How did it come that we, we never saw them? Well, w we knew they were there. Doctors for, for the last 150 years knew that we carried normal organisms, but we couldn't really study them very much. The, it was opaque. Uh, we couldn't grow many of them. We didn't understand the metabolic function. We couldn't even name most of them. And now the tools have become available that have opened up this field. And then it becomes clear that, th that they are important. I think the, another interesting question is uh, why we didn't think about it when we used antibiotics so much. Uh, why didn't we recognize that in addition to all the, the bad microbes, there were friendly microbes? The, the whole world has become very germophobic. We're afraid of germs, we're, we're, we're sold products so, so that we're washing our hands all the time and washing everything as, as if all germs were bad. And of course they're not. Most of them are neutral or good. And so we have to find the correct balance. It's, a, it's actually a very green concept. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much uh, for this conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas.